Have you ever wondered what makes it possible for a country to flex on the world stage? Our friends on the left side of the aisle would want you to believe it were because of taxes. There's nothing new about taxes, though. In fact, the first income tax was paid by that old dude in the Bible, Abraham. It was written on a rock by the hand of divinity and handed to Moses at the top of Mount Sinai. And you might want to remember this. It was at the flat rate of 10%. It promised the wrath of God on anybody who tampered with or violated that law. Jesus was born in Bethlehem because Joseph was on his way to pay his taxes. Joseph was a baller back in the day because he was a landowner and belonged to the house and lineage of David. Yet the taxes exacted by Caesar Augustus were so gangster that he didn't have enough money left over to employ a trusted homeboy to go pay his taxes for him. So even though Mary was hella pregnant, her and Joseph made the trip themselves. And because of this, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Once more, he was born in a manger because at the time they got there, there was a housing shortage. Our troubles are nothing new. At Runnymede, the Magna Carta, and I'm not talking about Jay-Z, was handed to King John on the end of a sword, denying royalty the right of unlimited taxation. But leave it up to the American people to become the first in recorded history ever to voluntarily surrender our rights to private property. Oh yes, we did, with an innocent sounding constitutional amendment, the 16th, which says that Congress shall have the power to lay and collect taxes on incomes from whatever source derived. But our dumbasses forgot to put any limit to the extent to which we could tax ourselves. Conceivably, we could be taxed ourselves out of all private property. We could be taxed not 70, 80, 90%, but at 100%. We could wake up one morning to find out the government owns the barbershop, the crib, the whip, and even has a mortgage on the church, and all done legally. Historically, when any nation has taxed its people more than 25% of their national income, initiative was destroyed, and that nation was headed for economic eclipse. Back in the day in 65, and it isn't much different today, the American people were being taxed 33% of their total income. History says we'll roll forward on momentum for a little while, but we better get some more gas in the tank pretty quick. You see, ours is not the first dope-ass government to arise on the world stage. There have been several. Rome, Spain, Greece, China, and others. And each enjoyed about 150 years at its zenith. We're past that already. Then each of them started to decay. Not one of them was ever destroyed by anybody else's marching legions. Each rotted away, morally, socially, culturally, economically, simultaneously. You know, one of the most cruel paradoxes of history is this. Because each was a dope-ass government, it bore bountiful fruit. And when it bore bountiful fruit, the people got fat. And when the people got fat, they got lazy. And when they got lazy, they began to want to absolve themselves of personal responsibility. They turned it over to government to do for them the things they traditionally would have done for themselves. At first, there appears to be nothing wrong with asking the government to do a little extra for you. But if you ask government for extra services, government, in order to perform its increasing function, has to get bigger, right? And as government gets bigger, in order to support its increasing size, it has to do what? Tax the individual more, so the individual gets smaller. And to collect the increased taxes requires more tax collectors, so the government gets bigger. And in order to pay the additional tax collectors, you guessed it, it has to tax the individual more. So the government gets bigger and the individual gets smaller until the government is all powerful and the individual is hardly anything at all. The government is all powerful and the people become nothing more than cattle.